Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny. Welcome back to some more FNAF news right in the middle of Bendy in the Ink Machine week. I apologize. And then next week, we've got our playthrough on the brand new game Bendy in the Dark Revival. But for right now, let's take a break, step back, go back to FNAF because we've actually got a lot of very exciting news to talk about, including brand new reveals from Hex and U2s. Some more teasers on the previously revealed new Toy Freddy variant coming in Pop Goes Evergreen and also a development update on the Ruin DLC from Steel Wool. So a lot of very exciting news. If you're excited, don't forget to subscribe. Also hit the like button while you're down there. We're trying to get 50k by the end of the year, and I think we'll be able to hit it, but it requires your help. So without further ado, let's kick this video off by talking about some book news because this bad boy released early. Somnophobia Tales from the Pizzaplex number three, you may remember got delayed to December, but actually it got released a few days ago in Walmart stores. I can only assume it's because they just didn't update their systems to clarify this isn't releasing until December. So if you wanted the book early, maybe go check out your local Walmart. Next up a few days ago, we got some brand new teasers for the upcoming graphic novel volume two collection for the Fazbear Fright series. It was featured in Scholastic's trade parade for March of 2020. And these were the new previews of the new kid story that we're gonna see in the book. Now, unfortunately, it is a pretty low resolution teaser, but at least we get another glimpse at one of the upcoming stories. This releases in March. Next up, we got another reveal from Hex, this time teasing their balloon boy plushie. You can also see a bit of his balloon and also what looks to be his balloon sign. So he's gonna be having every accessory, including the previously revealed spinning propeller hat. I think he looks cute. His face is maybe a bit too boring in my opinion. I think it's just because the eyes are pretty small, but that makes sense because they are buttons, but overall this looks fantastic. Also, Hex changed their Twitter username to HexWave3 coming soon. So who knows, maybe next time we talk about Hex in a FNAF News video, we'll have an actual release date for Wave 3. But while we do wait for Wave 3, if you missed out on Waves 1 and 2, don't worry, they're back in stock. The original gang, including Spring Bonnie and Fredbear, are all back in stock, so if you missed out on them, I'll leave a link to the Hex store in the description if you want to go pick them up. Last week, we got a brand new game theory on FNAF, and with that new episode, Creator Inc. actually launched a whole bunch of new products themed around Security Breach, including a Security Breach blanket with the logo and Freddy's face on the background, a Security Breach motion lamp, which features logos of Security Breach in the lamp. I think that looks amazing. And finally, the Faz Car Racing Jacket. This looks amazing. It looks exactly like something you'd see on a NASCAR jacket, which I'm pretty sure they also just gripped and ripped this design from an actual NASCAR jacket, but it looks amazing. I just hope they don't get in trouble for doing that. Moving on to U2s, we got a whole bunch of news on them, including what looks to be some recolors of the FNAF 1 gang coming pretty soon, which I think all of us experienced with Funko are just like, oh, they're going to recolors already. They put up a poll on Twitter, which in my opinion is just gonna be completely rigged no matter what, because they did a retweet or like for this design. Of course, likes are going to get a bunch of more interactions than retweets, so I don't know why they didn't just do a regular Twitter poll. But yeah, I'd love to know how do you feel about YouTube's already hopping in and cashing in on recolors for the FNAF figures. Speaking of FNAF figures, we've got a brand new one coming soon but it's not what you may at first suspect. It's actually Cory Kenshin Glamrock Edition featuring Freddy's decapitated top head. There's no release date for this new Cory figure just yet, but in my opinion, I think it looks amazing. I love the outfit he's wearing. And also we have more Cory XFNAF U2's products coming soon in the form of pins. One of them featuring him wearing the Freddy mask, another one saying way to go Superstore. And the last one is an animatronic lurking behind him in the darkness, very ominous. Going back to regular FNAF figures though, we got Golden Freddy officially revealed to us. As you can see, he's rocking the iconic FNAF 1 pose when he's in your office. For some reason though, he's withered on his leg. And he's also still sporting the trademark U2's eyes, even though they're black on black eye sockets. We also got his box revealed to us, which, hey, I think this might be the best FNAF box we've seen in a long, long time. As you can see, the back of the box, which usually has like a short description of the character or a uh, person they've made into a figure, just has his FNAF 1 jump scare. That is amazing. It also says, it's me everywhere on the box. It's just a fantastic box overall. And lastly, for U2's news, yesterday we just got a whole bunch of brand new products revealed to us. Most importantly, the brand new pins. As as you can see, you've got Freddy singing, Bonnie being cute, Chica with the cupcake, 
Foxy peeking out of the box. Purple guy doing his weird hand thing. Glittery Golden Freddy on top of his director's VIP chair. And you've also got security breach pins of Glamrock Freddy, Chica eating some pizza, Roxanne going to town on that bone, Monty grinning just being an overall Chad, Vanny whispering with a knife, and finally, the best one of all, you got our boy Pat Pat. The wet floor sign is getting official merchandise. That's crazy. So those pins are up on the site right now. So are the mugs for Freddy and Vanny and also the Vanny slippers. These are all releasing next week. Uh, actually a week from this video going up the 18th of November. And now we move on to Pop Goes Evergreen. Last week's uh, weekly update for the Pop Goes series basically just rehashed everything we saw on Halloween. I'll still leave it linked down below if you want to read through it. It gives a lot more detail on what we saw. But instead, I'm just going to jump straight into the brand new teasers we got for the Toy Freddy variant which I will say is becoming a lot more difficult to talk about without having an actual name for him. So I'm just going to go with what I called him last episode, which was uh, my sleep paralysis, Toy Freddy. So a couple days ago, Ken released a brand new teaser showing off the sleep paralysis Toy Freddy. This is actually an extended shot of the teaser we saw last time for Halloween, showing off a bit more of his head. And actually today in celebration of FNAF 2's eight year anniversary, which happy birthday FNAF 2, it's crazy to think it's been eight years since that game. Kane revealed yet another teaser for sleep paralysis toy freddy showing him lurking in some darkness so that was pop goes evergreen now we move on to the final news topic for today and that is security breach finally getting a release date for their xbox port and also some development updates on the ruin dlc so first up let's talk about security breach finally coming to the xbox still will release this short clip the other day announcing that on november 22nd that's right mark it on your calendars xbox players the game is finally being released for xbox series x and s and xbox one so finally hey your prayers have been answered you're not being left in the dark anymore it may have taken almost a year, but hey, at, at least you got it, boys. And lastly, they released a whole brand new blog post talking about what's going on with the studio right now, how the studio has actually progressed and grown since the start of the year, and also how development's going on Ruin. Starting at the beginning of this year, we took a hard look at ourselves and began discussing how Steel Wool will evolve. We asked two big questions. How do we grow our teams responsibly and improve our development process? Being a scrappy indie developer isn't just in our blood, it's literally our DNA and monumentally critical to our creative identity. Altering processes and hiring more folks are going to affect that, so we've taken our time to ensure the spirit of who we are flourishes to meet our lofty ambitions. We knew we needed more developers and operational staff, so we set our hiring goals in February and as of today, we filled every single one of those roles, nearly doubling the total size of our studio. This includes programmers, producers, game designers, animators, IT, HR, 2D artists, 3D artists, and a small army of quality assurance staff. We are fully equipped to do some truly astonishing things going forward. Hiring is only one half the battle. The second half is analyzing our strengths and weaknesses to determine where we double down and where we need to improve. And we've already implemented changes that have shown progress, specifically in our pre-production phases. Speaking of which, let's talk about Security Breach Ruin. I don't have any gameplay details that we're ready to share, but but I can talk about where we're at in development. Pursuant to growing our processes, the Security Breach team spent significant time in a rigorous pre-production process, focusing on streamlining our ability to construct fun, stable gameplay. So far this year, we have delivered on our vertical slice milestone earlier than planned and are ahead of schedule for a major upcoming development milestone. That vertical slice build was the very first one in my entire career that was a complete actual VC with functional versions of all the gameplay elements and systems we'd intended on building. Our team is absolutely crushing it, and I couldn't be prouder of them. We're fired up and can't wait to share more with y'all. And lastly, for the blog, they go back to Security Breach releasing on Xbox. A key area we're focused on strengthening is our ability to deliver a game on multiple platforms. So we cannot thank you enough for your patience while we took our time on this version of the game. That last statement does interest me. I do wonder if they're planning on trying to bring Security Breach to the Switch, maybe even to mobile. It'd be very tough, but I do think it could be interesting. But anyways, going back to Ruin, that is amazing news. Basically, they're taking taking a lot, a lot of time in pre-production, making sure the planning of the Ruin DLC is going well, making sure that it has stable gameplay, and the fact that they've doubled their staff is just absolutely insane, not only for 
FNAF projects like Ruin, but also for Steerwall as a whole. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how development with their games is going forward. But honestly, I only see the best coming out of this announcement. And I think anyone who is worried about Ruin being a buggy mess like the main game on launch should hopefully be a lot, a lot more optimistic knowing they're taking their time very, very early on with the development stages of the Ruin DLC and also doubling their staff. So yeah, I think we're in good hands with the DLC. That's gonna do it for this FNAF news video. I'd love to know what you think about all the topics we just talked about, especially that last one with the Ruin DLC. And I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.